Uh, what we're going to do is these pictures that you are seeing right now, we have no idea what they are because we didn't take them yet. The idea is, as you can see, has some light draggings. So in other words, it's light painting and I want to be able to see Odilia and her movement. We're going to use lights and flash to do that. She has that really cool thing called... It's a hula hoop. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna have a lot of fun because I am here with Otilia and Bruno. Okay, I forgot, I always forgot that his name, but it's no As you can see, I am using some black cloths and we want a black background so the lights will pop up. The first thing that you want to do is calculate how much exposure do you need to get the light rays from the... I want to call it bow, but it's not a bow, what's that? It's a hula hoop. Every situation will be different depending how you're gonna work. For example, we have some fade light here on this room, uh, mainly so we can work without bumping into stuff. You can try to cut the ambient light with your camera. One of the things that you can do that is lower the ISO as much as possible. My camera goes to 50 and with an aperture of F5, I managed to get the light of the bow and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. Okay, let me just make a test shot. Even though we have some ambient light to do this tutorial, you can see that the ambient light is almost non-visible with my exposure. That is kind of exposure you want to get. So we can see the colors and we can see the movement. If you really need to shut down the ambient light because they are way too powerful and you can't get a good exposure, you have to put your lens in manual mode and pre-focus before shutting down the lights. Oh, okay, pause. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Amateur mistake, everyone. So what happened is it was way too dark and my camera couldn't focus. Next, the flash. I'm gonna put my main flash on my camera. If your camera have a pop-up, you can use that as well. And I'm gonna use TTL. So just to be honest, I won't use it manual, okay? This main flash will shoot at the end of the exposure. That's called sync flash rear, rear, um, Whatever, I am always mistaking that name, it's okay, there's no It's shooting at the end of the exposure, so two seconds and then it shoots. After that, I have really, really cheap uh, speed light and that is in slave mode. If this sensor here sends a flash, it will flash as well. Now, I have this beauty dish as a backlight, not really a backlight, but trying to be, okay? And also I have another flash inside of this big box. Now, you don't need all of these flashes as I am doing here. The main one will do, do a really nice job, but those flashes are quite cheap. Now, they don't have TTL, they don't have automatic settings, you have to do everything manual, okay? So I'm gonna ask Odilia a little bit from here, do her thing, okay? I won't try to copy because I'm gonna do some bullshit <laughs> and end around here, okay? As we don't have much room, I won't use two seconds, I will use only one second. Uh, I'm gonna put myself a little bit higher so I won't have the ceiling. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, go. Now, she needs more time, okay? This was a little bit short. So let's do exactly the same thing. Seal the plate. And I'm gonna give you two seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. You guys may wonder, well, Miguel, you are using this without a tripod. Because I can. <laughs> uh, usually, yes, you should use a tripod, but uh, image stabilization of the new IBIS Canon with the lens, it makes mind-blowing sharp images even though. And also, I am using my best. You will see a bunch of tutorials of this technique and they say to use the rear flash sync whatever 
What I noticed here with Odilia, she is a natural flow artist. As she is a more a performer than a mechanical sportsman, that is a good idea to use that at the first. So I know what I'm gonna get first. Speed light control. Let me go all the way to settings and put on the first curtain. I can just focus on her be with a smile or her being looking lovely and she have two seconds. To make some cool shots. Now, this is way, way too fun. So if we start shooting, we won't stop. So, so to get Odilia's movement, we need, of course, an external uh, continuous light, but to catch her uh, at the end of the action, we have to go back to the rear curtain sink. As you can see, I added here this LED light, uh, whatever you want to call this. So it's in red right now. If you don't have RGB color LED, you can just use a lamp with a colored plastic on top. Just be careful, don't put your house in fire. But there we go, we're gonna add this LED over here and I'm gonna shut down this flash over here. So it won't erase, because this flash is a white, powerful flash, it will erase what the red channel is giving right here. Just a quick tip, if you don't have a black background, uh, you are better off separating the people from the background, because as you can see, it's casting a little bit of red over there. Or uh, just add a little cardboard over here as a barn doors, okay? Ideally, for lights like this, you want a rectangle softbox, a strip one, so a long one. So the light is soft, but in just in one direction. It won't slip the sides here. I'm not sure about the exposure of that LED, okay? Let's try this. Let's see if the exposure is good. So I'm gonna ask you to start here, okay? Make something really cool and stop around here. So the first shot will be more exposure test than anything else. Three, two, one, go. Let's try that again. Go a little bit to your right. And three, two, one, go. As you can see now, we have a drag on red, but it's not powerful enough. What we need to do, because these lights are already on its max, is diminish the light here and push for something that will add a little bit of light. Not 50 ISO, but around 200. Let's see if it isn't too much, okay? Okay, three, two, one, go. Nice, as you can see now, the red, it's intensified a little bit. As I am pushing the ISO, you can see that the ambient light, it's getting on our ray, so we have to shut down. I'm gonna ask the cameraman to shut down the light. Okay, okay, three, two, one, go. As you can see, we added the softbox over here with the blue light. In this part, I want to show you that it's not only her that can do the movement, you yourself can do the movement as well. So what I'm gonna do is panning movement. Hold it as much fixed as you can. Uh, you look like a... <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, I have some problems focusing, so I am focusing manually. There you go. So I'm gonna practice my movement. Uh, I'm gonna just record this so you guys can see. I just, I'm just looking for the position that I need to move. That is my barrier. So three, two, one. Let's try. Oh yes, that, that is good. Go more to your right. Can, may I? Now, when you are working with models, usually you don't want to touch them or get on their uh, personal space. There you go, thank you. So avoid that. Usually you have a boyfriend to do that, but the boyfriend is filming this, okay? I want to see more your face. You are too sideways. Yes, there you go. 
very good nice check that out and there you go so drop a like if you learned something comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this i am miguel i'm bruno and i'm Cecilia. see ya nice to stick around